but the rest of him feels wholly disembodied, as if it attaches no intrinsic value to the matter at hand. He feels like the flinched blood or a butcher may trim from a choice fillet of prime English beef, and as the song says, he has never felt this way before. This is completely new territory for him. He can see that the hard globes of rivers' breasts are perfect and better than the real thing, and he attempts to lift his arm in order to pinch her nipples, which are the size and texture of licorice jelly spots, or stick his finger in her asshole or something, but realizes with a certain amount of satisfaction that he can't be fucked, and he lets his arm drop to the side. River squeezes Bunny's cock with her muscular vagina. Wow, says Bunny from the depths of space. Pilatus, says River. <laughs> Who? Runs Bunny. Cunt crunches, says River, and contracts her pelvic floor again. The remote is lodged under Bunny's left butt, and as he shifts his weight, the television turns on. Bunny's head rolls off the edge of the sofa, and he sees, upside down, CCTV footage of the horned killer with his trident terrorizing shoppers in a Tesco car park in Birmingham. The bad news ribbon that runs along the bottom of the screen informs Bunny that the guy has struck again. Earlier that day, he had walked into a shared accommodation in Bordsley Green and butchered two young nurses asleep in their beds with a garden fork. There is general panic in the Midlands. The police continue to be baffled. He's just getting started, mutters Bunny, the flicker of the TV reflecting in his upside down eyes. And he's coming this way. River, however, is lost to her gesture of altruism and does not hear. Bunny lifts his head and looks at her and sees that River's face has changed somehow. There is a pout of hubris and self-admiration as she picks up the, rib uh, up the rhythm of what she would consider to be, come morning sober light, basically a sympathy fuck. Oh, she says as she pounds her bulletproof pussy down. You, she says, her pistons firing, poor, poor man. Bunny is about to close his eyes when he sees, by the window, Hidden in the folds of the rose-colored chenille curtains, what appears to be his deceased wife, Libby. She is dressed in her orange nightdress, and she is waving at him. <laughs> Spooked, Bunny makes a hopeless, wounded sound and opens his mouth and releases a hiss of gas as if his very soul was escaping, and then bucks frantically at River in an attempt to dislodge her, which is just what River needs to send her over the edge. Bunny, trapped in the vice of her climaxing haunches, squeezes shut his eyes. River screams and digs her nails into his chest. Bunny opens his eyes again, looks wildly around, but Libby, his wife, is gone. My wife was here, he says to River or somebody. She was watching. Oh yeah, says River, disempowering herself. You might want to see somebody about that. I know a guy in Camp Town you could talk to. Bunny jabs his finger at the news bulletin on the TV, and he is coming down. Huh? Look, I'd better go, says River, and raises the perfect orbs of her rear end, slick with her various juices, into the early morning air, and looks under the sofa 